So hello, this short video um, is intended to give you some uh, understanding of, of the practical work assignment you are going to do during this course and uh, the main topic here is how to understand Euler angles. As uh, you may have noticed, uh, you are going to model the motion of this kind of uh, gyroscope which is made of a bicycle wheel and it's uh, as you know it rotates around its symmetry axis and it can also uh, precess around a uh, vertical direction and also it can be uh, tilted with respect to the uh, to the uh, vertical and uh, if you look at the motion of the of a spinning top or, or gyroscope, uh, there are three important angles here. First of all, this Psi angle is the rotational angle around the symmetry axis. So that is the axis around which the, the wheel is rotating. And then there may be precision around the um, vertical direction, but then there's also the tilting angle uh, with respect to the, the vertical. And so these are the Euler angles. And the equations of motion will be written in terms of these three angles. So these angular velocities, the time derivatives of these angles are the angular velocities which we are uh, mainly uh, looking at. Now, um, how to describe this spinning top? There are three different uh, variables then of course there's a, the mass, uh, the center of, of mass, uh, uh, which which must be determined somehow. It's, it's, it must be somewhere here. So you need the mass of this system. But then there are also uh, three uh, principal uh, moments of inertia, inertia. and uh, this uh, direction three is along the symmetry axis. So it's uh, the momentum for inertia is here, here E three. Then um, there's a perpendicular direction and you have two equivalent directions so, uh, because of the symmetry. So you need only uh, momentum with inertia uh, I1. And uh, so then you need three different directions. And uh, it's a natural way to, to choose uh, direction three. So there's a unit vector E3 that's pointing towards the, the symmetry axis. Then the next symmetry axis should be perpendicular to the uh, plane which is spanned by vertical and this uh, symmetry, symmetry axis. So you have this plane and so uh, the rotation around this uh, direction or axis 2, that's actually uh, the rotation around angle theta. So Rotation theta is in direction of e, e2. Then there's the third uh, axis, which is uh, perpendicular to the uh, to these two axes, and so it's like tilted uh, angle theta downwards from the xy plane. So there's uh, uh, this is like in in uh, spherical coordinates. You have this uh, co-latitude angle theta. Then you have this azimuthal angle of phi and so uh, this plane of tilting has rotated uh, the angle of phi and then you still have the tilting theta. So this axis E1 points, uh, um, points somewhat downwards uh, from the xy plane. All right, now if you look at the angular velocity, that's very important uh, due to the, uh, because we are, in Lagrangian mechanics, we are constructing um, kinetic energy and it is written in terms of the components of uh, angular velocity and these components have to uh, be described in terms of uh, these three principal directions. So they are, uh, first, of the, first of all, there's a very simple term. Uh, the only term around uh, axis 2 
is rotation uh, in angular velocity theta dot. So you will have this term here, theta dot times e2. Then if you look at the direction uh, e3, then it's natural that, that there's first this uh, psi, angle psi. So you will have psi dot here in direction e3. But then also this, uh, rota this, this precessional uh, rotation with the angular velocity phi dot has a component in direction of, of uh, e3. And so if you project z axis to the uh, direction of, of the rotational uh, axis, then you must have a phi dot times cosine theta. So there is this term phi dot cosine theta. But then uh, there's another projection of, of uh, this vertical axis uh, and it is in direction of, of this uh, axis 1. And now you have a, a, it must be a sign here, it's direction sine, uh, sorry, sine of theta, but it's to the negative uh, um, axis E1, so it must be minus phi dot sine theta E1. All right, now if you look at the uh, <coughs> kinetic energy, you should have the terms uh, one half times I1, the inertia of moment, uh, moment of inertia in direction one, times the angular velocity in direction one. And so you take a square of, of this term. Then you will have one half times I2 times omega two squared, but because of symmetry, I1 and I2 are here equal. So you have actually uh, omega two uh, squared times one half I1, and this is omega uh, two. And then this is uh, separate. This is uh, one half I three times omega three squared. So you need all this uh, squared. And here you have the uh, kinetic energy. Then uh, for a Lagrangian, you will need um, potential energy. So that's uh, something you should do by yourself and then construct Lagrangian as uh, 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 kinetic energy minus potential energy. And then you can either write, uh, derive the Lagrangian equations of motion or uh, derive uh, generalized momenta and Hamiltonian and then and derive uh, Hamilton's equation of motion. And in this uh, practical work assignment you will, your task is to uh, derive Hamilton's equation of motion. And then you should be ready to model the motion of this kind of complicated looking, uh, looking bicycle wheel, but uh, in principle it shouldn't be too difficult. So if you need help uh, and, and uh, Jonas will be uh, giving advice. So thank you for your attention.